You, you, you're gonna gonna selling one of these to me. This is what's going to happen, Aaron. <laughs> I'm gonna get I, sold. I, I'm gonna get sold a bike right now, aren't I? I? I've never been in sales. I just tell you what it is. <laughs> yeah. Morning, guys. Mark here from uh, from Knox Armour. We are here on uh, the BMW stand here at Eichmer 2019, and I've been lucky enough. To, uh, to get my hands on Max Renko, who is the product development manager for BMW. Yeah. Have I got that right, Max? Yeah, product manager, so okay. more a marketing guy, but still <laughs> look into engineering stuff as well. Yeah, well, I got that impression when we had a conversation the other day, you know your stuff. Um, I'm a previous owner of this bike, uh, and I absolutely loved kind of what this bike could do. I've always looked for a kind of Swiss army knife of a bike. It kind of just ticks so many different boxes. So I was really, really interested to see this new variant. And I've got to say the styling is superb. It looks fantastic. And I just thought while we had the opportunity, you could kind of walk us through the changes that have, have, have been seen with this new bike. Um, yeah, it depends on how much time you get. <laughs> because there's so many, uh, there are a lot of changes in the bike, but sure. um, you, but maybe might not, maybe... you might not see them at first glance, but it's really the aggregation of marginal gains yes. here that makes the whole package so compelling. Yes. Um, with the old generation, and we had a huge sales success. I think it was by far the best selling adventure sports bike, both worldwide and also in the UK. Wow. Um, especially I didn't know UK. That. UK used to be a superb superbike market. And yes. A lot of former superbike riders coming into the adventure segments that mm. couldn't be addressed with a current boxer offering or. No. And, you know, two-cylinder bikes. If you're a four-cylinder guy, you'll always be, always be a four-cylinder guy, yeah. and this is the bike for you. Um, well, I guess the, the, the kind of opener for that, the key for that was introducing the S1000RR, right? Because Yeah, so that was a huge step forward yeah. for us for, as a brand. You know, yeah. um, 10 years ago, nobody would have guessed that BMW might, you know, produce sports oh, bikes. And, and what a bike, you know. It, it really introduced the digital age for bikes, you know, traction controls, riding modes, yeah. digital suspensions, everything. Yeah. That was a huge step forward for the, for the, for the motorcycle industry as well, because sure. until then you had the Japanese bikes, you know, improving bikes by adding two horsepower each year, yeah. but it was always the same analog bike. Yes. Um, so, of course, you find a lot of technology in this bike as yeah. well. It's always derived from the double R. Yeah. Um, I think one of the main improvements over the old bike was just this wider range in between sportiness and long distance performance. Yeah. So the old bike was very, very, good at you know offering sporty performance in an upright seating position just yeah. like gs seating position yes double our heart yes however due to technology constraints back in the days for example the valving technology in our dynamic ease of suspension we were unfortunately in some ways a bit limited when it came to you know offering some more compliance over small bumps and, okay. and touring comfort okay so the old bike was very good at the sporty side yes but it were very limited in terms of technology when it came to more offering more comfort when you yeah. needed it yeah so we always want to you know hone the crap of our bikes yes. on b roads but at some point you got always gotta cover some distance yeah and then the old bike wasn't as good as the new bike is when it came to you know small bumps on the highway yeah. or, or potholes just been able to soak up that energy yeah just uh, this is not it's still a sporty bike it's not like having a mar magic carpet ride no. but, um you will instantly feel because you know the old bike you will feel how better it rides over bad roads yeah and this nets for a much higher traction on the bike okay um speaking of traction we do have the same traction control as tom sykes has in his bike wow so double r xr and also tom sykes share the same technology the, the, the same w the, this world superbike yeah effectively he's got the yeah. same electronics we were we were testing the prototypes when we were developing the double r yeah and we had our, our race guys test the bike and they wanted to have the technology in their prototype uh, racing bikes oh as wow well. so it really it's a huge step forward but on paper it's always you used to have DTC traction control, now you have DTC traction control, there's no difference. Yeah. But in reality, there's a huge difference. The, the, yeah. We now have, for example, an uh, inertia measuring unit with a Within, sixth axis. Right. So we can really like precisely uh, detect wheelies. <laughs> so now we have a new wheelie function, power wheelie, which allows for a high wheelie. <laughs> Aaron, are you listening to this? <coughs> Aaron and, does like a wheelie. Um, you also have, for example, Riding Modes Pro as standard. Yeah. So that includes with this bike, Analog to the to the double R, yeah. we can configure dynamic pro mode now yeah. in five dimensions, not right. only three like ABS traction and engine mapping, 
but you can set up for your engine braking separately, yeah. or you can set up your wheelie con function uh, separately from a traction control. Which is which, which is the technology that was introduced in the new double R. Exactly. Right, yeah. Okay. But it's uh, you know a bit modified for the street because you know as a street rider you do not want to get in the finest details yeah. of like small electronic clicks on the dynamic ESA suspension. Okay. So we, for example, have um, dynamic ESA, which in the standard mode offers only one mode, but as I said, with a wider range where it can adapt to. Okay. Um, and, it does, and it does that automatically, does it? Yeah, yeah. That, that's the point of semi-active yeah. suspension. So wow. it, it reacts to the way you ride yeah. and it just adapts to the proper damping um, uh, okay. rate. There is a risk, isn't there, if you, do, if you introduce <coughs> too, too many electronic aids that it can, so it can create a barrier between the for, interface between the rider and the bike. Let's take the, the traction bike. control as an example. You don't want to have a traction control that you know takes away all the power. You want, but you want to have a traction control that saves your ass yes. from you know. Yeah. Crashing, yeah. Completely. You know? Yeah. 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 yeah um, I get so you. it will allow in some settings. It will allow for a small slide and yeah. everything. Yeah. But it will just keep everything yeah. safe so you don't have. But there is that. It's an invisible net and it's it's there just at the right exactly. moment not to yeah. It's not designed as a track bike. No, of course not. But uh, it's designed as the most versatile bike. Yes. So we've seen a lot of people doing track days with it. Yeah. But they wouldn't race it in series, of course. No. But they, they do a lot of track yes. days. Yeah. Um, but it's like a really the most versatile bike in our lineup. Yeah. It does all of it, doesn't yeah. it? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, of course, you have to accept that you know it's a bigger bike, it's a heavier bike. It's compromised if you ride it at the track. Of course, it is. If you want to do that, then you, you buy a double R, don't well, you? Well, it's but not it's still. Very I feel capable. a bit offended saying it's heavy <laughs> because um, we were we were Heavy, heavier <laughs> than a double R. Is that <laughs> we're heavier than a double, double R, R? But yeah. the double R on the other side is almost um, almost the lightest bike in the segment as well. So um, we have a lot of benefits taken over from the double R. Yes. Um, so the whole weight saving philosophy that came on yeah. with the new generation of the double R is also found in the XR. I'm really curious about that. I'd, I'd like you to tell us about kind of the, the philosophy around that weight reduction and. and um, and how that affects the bike and its performance and its and its feel because it's a it's it's a lot of weight, isn't it? It's, we're not talking about a kilo or two. We're talking like ten kilos ish. Yeah. So if you're just you know bench racing with spec sheets, it only only reads two kilograms lighter. But right. that's half the truth because yeah. we put so much in a standard bike, for example, dynamic ESA suspension yes. and standard on the bike, yes. which adds a couple of kilos. Yes. Um, you got the pannier holes integrated in the bike that used to add a couple of kilos with the old bike. So yeah. once you really compare standard customer spec so Correct. with the touring package and the dynamic package yeah this bike really is 10 kilograms lighter right so you can't compare the homologation no. rate you really have to look into how the bikes are usually configured yeah and a normal spec with all the options yeah. packages it's true jet 10 kilograms lighter yeah. the average weight of a customer bike is exactly. x and this is 10 kilos less than that exactly yeah. and um the thing is we see not only bmw bikes but the, the industry in general bikes are getting heavier and heavier and heavier just look into you know full-size adventure bikes. They yeah. always, they, they are now getting towards a weight of 280 in full trim. I mean, that's not funny, man. It's, nah, it's, it's, that's, yeah. that's horrible. So it's this still bike, a third of a ton. In, in, in full spec with the touring package and you know, the luggage racks and the main stand, all the heavy stuff yeah. on it, is with a full tank of gas, like completely Brimmed. full, yeah. uh, 233 kilograms. Yeah, I mean, and from there on, you can add in, for example, our M lightweight battery and our M carbon package. Yeah which reduces the weight by a further four kilograms. Oh, so really? In the reality, it will be down to 280 point, uh, 228 point something. Right. And this is really, which I mean- Which for a bike of this <coughs> stature is- You got two up touring performance. You yeah. got all the weather protection. Yeah. You got all the, the bling that yeah. you need on longer distances. And all the performance. And the weights of some uh, roadsters, you know what yeah. I mean? I yeah. think that the new H, uh, ZH2 is 238 kilograms 240, for a naked bike. Give or take, yeah. I mean, and that, that, that's a naked, right? Yeah. It, so that's the point. It has a lot of horsepower, but I thought it's more important to reduce the weight because the horsepower in it, it would be easy to just put yeah. in a double R engine, have yeah. 207 horsepower yeah. on tap and let's call it a day. Yeah. But for a bike of this segment, it doesn't have any benefits in terms to, of, you know, deceleration, braking performance, sure. agility. Yeah. By improving the power to weight ratio, we are actually faster in a straight line yeah. from zero to 200 kilometers per hour. And also top speed was increased because we're now more aerodynamic. Right. And all that without uh, increasing the, the horsepower output. So how fast does it go? <laughs> in Germany or, <laughs> or in a private well, road in, in Mexico? In, 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 <laughs> <laughs> well, let's just say we were testing it on a, on a private road. How fast would it do? It's one? It's five kilometers faster, right. 255 now. Right, OK. Um, and our tacks are pretty precise when it comes yes. to speed or speed. Yeah. yeah. Um, so I think 
there were at first some people who were online, especially, you know, people that haven't experienced bike as yeah. I could. They were like, oh, why, why it's the same power output? It's not about the top peak output, it's more about the rideability and the way the power comes on. So um, we don't have the shift cam in that engine. No. On purpose, because, you know, um, the double R is very good at combining that low end grunt that the XR has always had with yes. the top end power of the old generation of the double R. Yes. Because it, it's a bike that's used on the street and on the racetrack. Right. So this is a bike you can use on the track day, but it's not made for the racetrack. No. You don't need a 15,000 RPM red line no, on that don't. bike. No. I mean, that's even first gear, that's 140 kilometers on a straight line at 15,000 RPM. So yeah. that's not something you need on an XR. No. So once you say, okay, you only need a ride line of 12,000 and you try to optimize the engine and the way it rides for an RPM range between 4 and 9,000 RPMs, then you don't need a shift cam. The shift cam only shifts at 9,000 RPM. Right. So you spend, people spend most time underneath yeah, that, yeah. that, that, in that, that kind of 9,000 RPMs. Yeah. Yeah. And for, so in our mm, estimation, it was better to ditch the shift cam system. <laughs> in terms of fuel efficiency, that, that's that's improved or it's very similar yeah, to Yeah, we, we saved a half a liter over 100 kilometers. And this is a 20, how many liters? It's a 20 liter tank, so it's the yeah. same size as the old one, yeah. but we reduced fuel consumption by almost 10%. Right. Um, also, thanks to a new gearbox, as I said before, we want to improve also on the long distance performance and comfort side. Yeah. Um, so the gearbox in fourth, fifth, and sixth gear are longer. Okay. It's two, four, and eight percent. Right. So it drops that steady highway cruising yep. RPMs where people might sometimes have been looking for a seventh or eighth gear. It shouldn't just you know stress you out like a superbike. So for example, we also revised the total system of uh, handlebar decoupling. Yeah. The old bike uh, had a different technology. Now we have rubber bushings in in the bridge. That's completely different. But it's very good at you know I can show it if you like. Sure. Um, it's very good at just twisting back and forth and side to oh, side. You can see it kind of flex. You can, if you look here on the bridge. And, and that, that's, sort of, that's, sort of, that's sort of damping, is it? Yeah, so it, it totally isolates the handlebars and the mirrors. So if you look at back and forth. Oh, wow, yeah. And, and side to side. And that, how However, does it, it does not, you know, affect steering position. If you, if you twist the, the handlebar, it, it does not twist. It doesn't over rotate, yeah. And what, how, how, does that, how does that affect the riding experience? Just, just, it's just more comfortable. Yeah, well, it's just, you know, just uh, handlebar bus was an issue yes. with some customers. Yeah. Um, I have to say it wasn't an issue for me so much, but, you know, different strokes with different folks. Yeah. Um, but we needed to address that issue for the next generation. Yeah. That was something I wanted to do. And you, you've, done, you've done some mileage on this <coughs> bike yourself. Yeah, sure. Yeah. <laughs> how, how many, how, what sort of level of mileage does the bike do in testing? It's hundreds of thousands of kilometers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, for the exhaust alone, you gotta do a 50,000 kilometer just, test. Just, just for the exhaust? Just, just to, you know, to get the, the aging of the, the catalytic converter, yeah. to see whether it will still hold up in terms of emissions after yeah. 50,000. Yeah. But there are at several steps in the development process, you get to test the bikes over longer distances. And not only one bike, but a couple of bikes. Yeah. Um, so I'm also very happy that there weren't any spy shouts out there, yeah. uh, because there were so many people, you know, asking for a new bike, you yeah. know, when is the new one coming out and the hype here has been amazing. Yeah. Um, well, it's not surprising because it does look absolutely sensational. Just this design language for me is just really, I'm, really interesting. I'm, I'm, I'm really glad that we were able to, you know, get all the precise lines on the bike, you know, yeah. the typical XO fly line. And they now have a unique profile you also find on the on the on smaller F nine hundred XR yeah. with a side floating panel. Yeah. So it's really like bears a family resemblance. Yeah. So, so the base model has dynamic ESA suspension, yes. the yeah. electronic suspension, TFT with connectivity, riding modes pro, full LED lights, yeah. pannier holders, everything yeah. comes standard. And that's 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 the, the, the minimum the trim engine. that you have. Yeah. yeah. So it's already a very comprehensive yes. package. Um, however, you can go from there, of course, because we're BMW and have very much technology as we offer as an option. Absolutely. For example, the Dynamic Ease Pro uh, option adds a second riding mode for the, the suspension. Okay. So, as I said before, the standard Dynamic Ease has a much wider range in between yeah. it can, where it can handle sportiness and long distance performance and touring comfort. Sure. But um, with the Dynamic Ease Pro, you get a second dynamic mode and okay. the range of the valves is even wider. Right. So it's maximum possible uh, function. Yeah. And you get the automatic self-leveling function. So, so you know, you no matter whether you are one or two people, it yeah. will always automatically adjust to the okay. proper right height. Yeah. And you get the option of having a min setting. So for example, you can lower it down when standing 
So when your lady gets on, you have a safer standing position. Okay. And then it will and come back up to a standing yeah. position. Wow. Well, if you have to adjust to get to, from min setting to auto setting, yeah. then we'll adjust to the, okay. to the load. Um, another option is the Headlight Pro option. Yeah. So the standard bike only has our top-notch low beam and high beam LED lights. Right. With the Headlight Pro, you get the Iconic Daylight running strips yeah. and the adaptive cornering lights. Another thing that the old one didn't have was keyless ride, for example. No. A lot of people were asking for that. Yeah. Now we finally have it. Yeah. Um, RDC, so tire pressure monitoring system, we okay. also have it now. Wow. So it also also shown in, in the display, you know, the, how much pressure you actually have. And you well, having the TFT gives you a yeah. Rapid additional. I mean, our our um, app is now probably the most comprehensive app in the market for OEMs. So you really get full aero guide and navigation right. with multiple waypoint planning. Okay. You can now import routes. Um, you can now choose curvy routes, fastest route or so shortest you, route. You, you can decide mm -hmm. what type of road you, you exactly. get to. Exactly. Right, super and clever, something for I can, a biker. I can, some, uh, something I can give away in the middle of November, we'll have a new uh, version of the app that now also adds performance statistics. Oh, so wow. you can see, you know, your, it records your, uh, no, you can also delete your know, maximum speed or something like that. Yeah. But it records your throttle input. So really, you can see how much revs you were going, the speed and the throttle, oh, wow. and you will see how rarely you actually use full power because the bike is so ballistic. Yeah. And then you also see, you know, you can relive, you know, we had your favorite B road, um, how much lean angle you were actually riding <laughs> in that moment. <laughs> oh, can... This is what I mean by dangerous. Yeah, <laughs> very embarrassing for some of us. We're never going to no. go riding together, man. I'm sorry. No, it's really, it's, it's, it gives <laughs> nice insights. <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing. So, I mean, it is feature, feature packed. And it's still got heated grips and it's still got cruise control because those are my favorite toys. Yeah. So thanks again, Max. Really, really It was a real pleasure. It. Thanks yeah, for coming you. by. Yeah, thank um, you. It's a really great bike. If you like it, comment in the section, subscribe. Thanks for coming by. It was a real cool uh, feature to have you here. Not at all. Thank, thank you very you. much. See you soon. Thanks, guys. Um,